Cool. Quick update. We had a few questions and we thought we'd make a little video about it. Um, yeah, so the first thing I talk about is Truett and I both had some water issues with the back 4000. Um, we believe this is across all the kits from all the resellers. So assuming ASI make a loom and then it's adapted, um, the loom is not waterproof. The back 4000, back 8000 is waterproof. Um, now, before we go any further, we need to specify that eBMX do tell you this. Whether they tell you it to the extent that of how big of a risk it is, probably not, but they do tell you it. Um, and so I, it's it's not on them and we're not having a go at them. As I've said before, they're an amazing company and, and, and I swear by them. But it's definitely an issue that either needs to be addressed or you need to look out for when buying the EBMX kit. Um, so how do we go about waterproofing it, Jared? Pretty much what we did is just silicon around the connector. The main thing is on the EBMX kit is the wiring loom attaches to the bottom of the back 4000 and then comes up the top. And they, they basically put like a decorative heat shrink or decorative casing over the cable. And what we found is that when you wash the bike or when you uh, ride on the bike, water will splash up, it'll follow down that and then go straight to the connector. The main issue we've had is that it literally only seems to affect throttle. Mm -hmm. So, We'll have a it's stuck. The worst bottle. thing possible, it affects. So, yes. Yeah. So imagine you've got a 72 volt battery, such as my bike, and you're on mode five. Running and 12 kilowatt. Yeah, running, yeah, and it's just full throttling yeah. without you even doing anything. That's what can happen if you don't waterproof it and you're not careful. Yeah. Um, I would waterproof at your own risk because obviously you might have had to get the connector out, but that's what we've done with silicon around it. Um, we haven't had any issues since. Um, yeah, yeah, and it was it was quite a major problem, um, as you would have saw in our recent video, where I'm literally riding around with no hands on the throttle, and it's just it's just it's just going. I'm just doing circles, um, and so that that obviously it must have had like a minor amount of water in it at that point. Um, but Jared at one point basically washed his bike, um, which should be fine, should be fine, but apparently. You gotta be pretty careful because he washed his bike and managed to get water in that connector, which is very easy to do. Um, as you can see, it just happened to me riding around in the mud, um, which all dirt bikes should be able to do in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Jared did get water in his connector and he was in the shed and he was just trying to get the bike to go, wasn't going and it just took off. Randomly just, Took off, just yeah, gone, yeah. lost it. Doing a burnout on the ground, he had to freaking run, hit the cave. It was, it was the whole, whole nine yards. It even, it even happened to me. Not as severe. Um, I managed to save it because I was expecting it to happen. I noticed my throttle was doing weird things, um, so I was on mode one. But even mode one, when it max throttles, is not enough to stop with the brake. So I was doing skiddies, and then I had to quickly flick it. If I didn't flick it. I still would have been doing skiddies down the road. Um, well, actually, probably would have rained or a parked car we've got out here. My, mine was probably an interesting one because I washed it. It had been a week. Um, it had been fairly warm. Um, I always, like, whenever I wash the bike, I'm kind of yeah. religious about not riding it straight away. But been a week, I literally jumped on it, turned it on, went, I normally ride in mode three or four, put it up, and then I went, I went tiny bit of throttle to make sure it was working. Had no throttle. Throttled again, throttled again, nothing was working. Kind of jiggled the bike around and then, and as I went to touch the throttle, the bike shot out literally from underneath me, across, landed straight to the ground, still in a complete burnout, max throttle, quickly run over, turned it off, as George said. Mm. Um, just as it, it is a safety issue because there is a lot yeah. of torque there and you don't have the normal control because you're relying on electronics. Um, I mean, we can dive into why that happens. I mean, technically, it's a potentiometer, it's one to 10 volts reading that voltage back. Um, so, and that voltage obviously is incorrect because there's water in the way of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, battery update. Um, Troy, you can talk about how many batteries you've been through. Yeah, um, so I have now been through two Suron batteries, um, running the bike at eight kilowatt. Um, yeah, I haven't, after the first one died, uh, that one, no, the one that's in the bike, 
So the first one started to die, and so I stopped using it, and I was like, well, this is average. So I stopped using it, switched over to that one, which was Jared's old battery, and I was like, right, I need to be careful on this battery. Now, mind you, Jared had been riding eight, well, it wasn't eight kilowatt, it would have been about seven-ish, yeah. whatever it was, because there was a bit of an issue with his back 4000, which EBMX sold for him. Um, but he had been riding with the egg rider on mode nine for, for quite a while. Um, so I put it on in my bike and it probably lasted all of a month, if yeah. that. Like, yeah, and it, it, it fully died. Like, it actually fully died. So that video where EBMX had sent me a new back 4000, that was the issue. My battery actually fully died to the point where it was basically cutting out, but it wouldn't cut out. So the way the back 4000 works that we figured out is it doesn't cut out when the battery sags it doesn't cut out on throttle because obviously that's a risk factor and a safety precaution it'll actually cut out the second you let off so the second i was giving it a bit you know holding some throttle obviously that battery would then sag go below voltage and it would go right the second he lets off i'm cutting throttle i'm sorry i'm, I'm yeah i'm cutting throttle i'm cutting power um and yeah so that was a bit of a bummer and so now i switch back to this one and this battery is like on its last legs as well. It sort of doesn't have all the grunt and you gotta be careful with it. I'm, already, I'm riding on like mode three um, at the moment with eight kilowatts, so whatever that is, I don't really know what that's putting out on mode three. Probably six. <laughs> Probably six. Um, I think, um, I was just judging real quick, I think everyone needs to realize if you do ask more power out of this battery, it just isn't gonna last. No. Like, even, not even pumping 7 kilowatt, the cells aren't rated for it. You can read up the Panasonic PF cells if you want to and see what they're rated for. They're not rated for this. There's a reason why Suron basically set the max amps to 85 amps. Um, you know, you're going well over the 100 mark on an 8 kilowatt churn. So it is going to die. It's going to die very quickly. Um, I'm kind of estimating here, but I reckon maybe Truett probably got, once he got his bypass installed and his churn done, he probably got maybe... 40 to 50 hours worth of riding. We're lucky here, we have my property to ride on. Um, so I'm sure it's normally here most weekends riding around. So he had a, he does a fair bit of time on the bike. So you just be just be thinking if you've got a battery. It's very up and downhill as well. So it's quite hard on the bike. So you, your, your, you know, your mileage might vary. Um, but mine has been very short lived. <laughs> and if you're always on the back wheel, then it's probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that might do it as well. All the phase ends. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I suppose, obviously, 72 volt battery, we went the Evil, I went the EBMX one, Truett's got his on the way as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of the cylindrical cell batteries. I think an NCM pouch cell is a better idea for something in this application just because you need. The, the biggest battery you can fit in that size hole. You don't want to have some huge section where you have to raise your battery compartment flap so far that you, your battery sticks out. Like these have a these have a decent amount of range. Um, they've got plenty of poke and I can't seem to overheat hours. Um, and like to be honest, like the power that outputs at 12 kilowatt, I like to try it at 15 as well. Um, like the battery just holds in, it has no issues at all. You notice no drop, nothing. I haven't pretty much low, I haven't lowered it probably past 20% because I'm trying to look after it, but I noticed no lag and throttle, nothing, no loss of power, so there's no voltage sag at all. So definitely, if you think about getting one, just do it. Changes the bike yeah. completely. Yeah, and definitely, yeah. With our experience so far, it just complete, can cha changes everything. It's just, yeah, you have basically, it goes from a bike that's limited to a bike that's, yeah, not limited at all. And at 12, at 12 kilowatt, that's a lot, it's enough. It is It is really enough. Like we've had now, you know, motocross riders ride it and all sorts and it's crazy quick. Um, and so, and to me, in my opinion, any more than 12 isn't needed. And any more than say 420 phase amps, whatever, whatever it's running for an 80 kilo rider um, to 100, I guess, I'm, I'm not obviously I'm where, where 80 kilos is plenty it's it's plenty um if you're not fat yeah you'll be right <laughs> <laughs> 420 435 it's, it's heaps it's, yeah. it's more enough to have fun um and if you want more bottom end you just you just go be a sprocket 
You go a bigger sprocket. That's you know that's all you really need to do. And in that way, it's actually easier on the motor again. So you're not actually then cranking heat because if you wanted more torque without going a bigger sprocket, so you still kept your top end speed, you're gonna have to pump phase amps. And with doing that, you're gonna be putting heat into the motor, and so you're gonna be tripping the overheat a lot more than you'd like to. Granted, it depends on how you ride, but I know with my riding, which is which is very on the power, I want everything all the time, I know I'll be overheating that left, right and centre with more phase amps. Yeah, it's, it's probably worth noting if you're, like a lot of people around here just testing it just because they don't know what the bike is or how good it goes, like everyone put it straight into mode five, just do constant pulls and you probably do get like like my my property is uphill and everyone's just pulling uphill and and with heavier riders than me and short like they're at least 90 plus kilos um like you probably get about five to eight full pulls at probably about a minute um just constantly one after another just with people testing it before you will get an over temp reading um true it does make a good point there so if true it's like if, if the wheel's kicking up a bit, you got to have to be careful that you're not throttling when the wheel is in the air because you yeah. wouldn't get a cutout. They're having, they're, there is a program cutout. Um, I understand it's there for a safety reason to protect the motor. Um, it, it can happen quite frequent if you're not careful, but it's more of a just learn how to ride around that. Yeah, so with, you know, uh, with my experience with the whole throttle cutoff thing, um, it's it can be a bit frustrating and a bit annoying it only takes two seconds to stop turn the bike off turn it back on go again um but you just get used to it you get used to it and you get used to it just you know where where it cuts off and where it doesn't um you know obviously hitting jumps not landing on power is a big thing that could be an issue for some motocross riders um because they love to use their throttle to level out the bike, they'll get in the air, ra da 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 you know, and, and all of that. You, you can't do that on this. Um, so that's that's something that, you know, I, I, it hasn't been an issue for me, um, but, you know, a lot of motocross riders, that will probably be an issue for. Um, so you just got to watch out for things like that, because that's where you probably, even though the cutoff is there, you, you, you could maybe hurt something doing that over and over again, landing on full power after a jump. Um, obviously, we, we don't know. We haven't experienced um, wrecking our motors yet, and hopefully we don't experience that. Um, but, yeah, it's no big issue, um, and we're re I'm, I'm really happy that EBMX put that in there as a safety precaution, because if it wasn't there, yeah, yeah we would probably have stuff motors by now. Um, so props to them for that, yeah. All right, cool, so we just got a few, I suppose, let us know what you want to see more of, whether you want to go more of the technical detail. I'm very technical personally, so I like to know everything before anything's done or purchase anything. Um, also buy heaps of stuff that is just useless, so we can tell you about that as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we've got some break upgrade video coming out soon. Uh, we're working on some 18, 21 inch wheel fitment, currently trying a 16 inch wheel at the moment, it doesn't fit. Uh, got some tie guides from uh, Charge Cycle Works that this was meant to fit without shaving off any knobs. You pretty much have to shave off the knobs and half the tie. So it doesn't work with this SMA Pro wheel. Yeah. So the fitment doesn't work, but we've just been experimenting. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the it brakes. We got to talk about your your brakes, man. Like they're, they're sick. Like you can get away with the brakes, the stock brakes, like they do the job, but these freaking MT Maguras are just Woo, they're just one finger, buttery smooth. Like, they're the bomb. Like, they're, they're good, they're good. It gives um, you a heap more confidence with the Maguras, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can brake later, they just have way more clamping force. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, we do a video coming out of that shortly, so, yeah. Um, we'll also probably talk about the difference between the Agro and the ASI. Um, yeah, oh, that, 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 ABT. All right, ABT. cool. We'll talk about that now. We'll actually talk about that now. We'll talk right. about that now. So there's tuners out there um, that's, that sell egg riders with the um, ASI controller. Um, I've hands down seen, well, felt the difference between having an egg rider control your ASI controller versus an APT directly talk to your ASI controller. The, you don't even want to know the egg rider. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether I quite know. Really, like a, a tune that wasn't designed for it. I feel like all my stuff again is from EBMX, but I feel like 
everything the EBMX guys are doing, they're trying to do a really good job of. Um, so I feel like they wouldn't give me something that was underperforming because of a, a tune issue. Maybe, I'm not sure, but all I can tell you is you put an APT display on one of these, retune it, you're doing a different loom. The, the low down torque is complete game changer. It's probably 30, 40% more low down torque. It, it's hard to explain, but it feels like almost like a throttle delay on torque. Um, it, just, it just didn't feel right from the get-go. Granted, Jared's bike also had that issue where it wasn't running at its max power, uh, but the egg rider was still doing weird things with the throttle, and it just, it just didn't feel right. The download torque, the download torque just, just wasn't there at all. Um, yeah. I just think, because obviously everyone's using pedal assist controllers for displays, I'm just, I'm just assuming whatever protocol it talks to, um, I know that the egg rider actually overwrites the ASI program in real time and you turn off your egg rider and then your ASI program just refolds back to what's actually written in there. I don't know whether that that overriding in real time is what affects that throttle. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see whether other people who have egg riders have that same throttle issue. Um, I also noticed with the egg rider, I have, if the bike would roll back and you throttled on, you would basically, the bike would stop, it wouldn't accelerate, and then it would accelerate. Yeah, um, that was annoying. That with, was really fast. With the APT, it's just you can it be rolling matter. backwards, just spinning the rear wheel, and it doesn't care. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you got that full display. Like, that display is awesome. Like, you know what's going on. Like, it is It is quite nice. It's a bit like um, I've seen on, like, uh, KDM Super Dukes and stuff where they have, like, a little iPad on the front. It's exactly like that. It's so cool. Um, really, really rate it. Um, hence why EBMX don't even do the egg rider anymore. They obviously realized that as well and was like, that's yeah, not really the guy. The APT is the better option. Um, yeah, cool. that's really all we have to say about that. Sweet. Well, I think that's it from us. So let us know what you want to see. Um, yeah, we'll be seeing you soon in a new video. Thank yep. you. Bye.